Hello, and welcome to Cybersecurity Today. I'm Jim Wiggins, your host. In case you haven't seen our show before, let me spend a little bit of time and tell you about it. So exactly what is this thing called Cybersecurity Today? Well, it's a show dedicated to tackling the subject of computer security in an exciting and thought-provoking manner. Cybersecurity Today is a 30-minute program that uses a talk show newscast format to discuss themes, topics, and current events in the cybersecurity space. Our purpose with this show is to minimize the complexity and lack of clarity that is sometimes found in the cybersecurity industry. For those viewers who are current practitioners in this space, this show will provide information on the current state of where things are at. We bring on a number of different guests to discuss different topics that are relevant to the cybersecurity market. We aim to provide information to a full spectrum of viewers, from novices to experts and everywhere in between. You're bound to learn something new about cybersecurity. Okay, so let's lay out some ground rules and talk about the format of today's show. This way you'll know what to expect. Today's show is going to be broken into two segments. We have our first segment, which we like to call Cyber Bytes. This first segment covers several current events happening in the cybersecurity industry. Some of these events you may have heard about, some of these may be new to you. Then, in our second segment, we have Mr. Leighton Johnson, who is a cyber educator and practitioner with decades of experience coming onto the show to discuss educational options when coming up to speed on the cybersecurity maturity model certification. We recently had Mr. John Janik on the show talking about the CMC from a government contracting perspective. Mr. Johnson will be discussing CMMC from an educational perspective. So if you want to understand the certification requirements for organizations and individuals, I think that you're gonna enjoy the discussion with Leighton and find it super interesting and informative. Maybe your organization is looking to understand the requirements or even get certified. Leighton will be able to explain to us how all of this works and the best way to pursue making sure you and your team have the appropriate knowledge, skills, and abilities to be successful within the CMMC program. Okay. So let's get into the cyber bytes and talk about what's going on today in the cybersecurity industry. For our first story, we're gonna talk about the White House. So the White House has set a deadline for agencies to track most of their IT systems through something known as the Continuous Diagnostics and Mitigation Program, sometimes gone by, goes by the acronym CDM. This new guidance continues a shift towards using more and more automation to track cyber metrics across the federal government. The Office of Management and Budget, OMB, released the Fiscal 2023 Federal Information Security Modernization Act guidance on December 2nd. This memo comes as Congress is still considering the first big update to FISMA in nearly a decade. The latest guidance, picking up on a theme from last year's FISMA memo, continues to shift agencies away from manual reporting. The memo directs agencies to report at least 80% of their government-owned IT systems through the Cybersecurity uh, and Infrastructure Security Agency CDM program by the end of fiscal 2023. In our second news article, Cuba ransomware attacks on critical infrastructure have continued in 2022 the FBI, as well as CISA, have warned. These attacks have been active since late 2019, and the Cuba ransomware attack is known for appending the .cuba or .cuba extension to encrypted files and was previously seen being distributed via a malware loader called Hansator, which typically provides threat actors with access to compromised networks. In December of 2021, the FBI issued an alert on Cuba ransomware operations, warning that the cyber criminals behind it might have received over $43 million in ransomware payments from their victims. In a joint alert published this week, CISA and the FBI have updated the figure to $60 million, 
saying that more than 100 organizations have been compromised as of August 2022. The ransomware has been used in attacks targeting organizations in the financial, government, healthcare, IT, and manufacturing sectors. Since spring of 2022, Cuba ransomware actors have modified their TTPs and tools to interact with compromised networks and extort payments from victims, CISA and the FBI say. In our third and final story, a CISA, as well as the National Security Agency, or NSA, and the Office of the Director of National Intelligence, sometimes go, goes by ODNI, published the third of a three-part series on securing the software supply chain, securing software supply chain series, recommended practices guide for customers. Now, this publication follows the August 2022 release of guidance for developers and the October 2022 release of guidance for suppliers. We reported on those on a previous episode. The guidance released recently, along with the accompanying fact sheets, provides recommended practices for software customers to ensure the integrity and security of software during their procurement and deployment phases. The Securing Software Supply Chain series is an output of the Enduring Security Framework, ESF, a public-private cross-sector working group led by the NSA and CISA. This series complements other U.S. government efforts underway to help the software ecosystem secure the supply chain, such as the Software Bill of Materials community. CISA encourages all organizations that participate in the software supply chain to review the guidance. Those are some of the more common headlines making news in the cybersecurity industry. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be back with our guest, Mr. Leighton Johnson, to talk about educational options when it comes to the cybersecurity maturity model certification. We'll see you back here in just a few minutes. Losing weight's a lot harder than gaining it, but with every step, I lower my risk for type 2 diabetes and heart disease. And that makes every step very much worth the effort. Learn how you can help stop diabetes. Visit checkupamerica.org or call 1-800-DIABETES. Welcome back to Cybersecurity Today. Is you or your organization faced with the Department of Defense's Cybersecurity Maturity Model Certification Program? Are you struggling to figure out how you will meet the compliance requirements to continue serving your DOD client? We've asked Mr. Leighton Johnson to come in onto the show and talk to us about education and training options for the CMMP, CMMC program. Leighton is the CTO, Chief Technology Officer, and founder of ISFMT, which is the Information Security Forensics Management Team. They're a provider of computer security, forensics consulting, and certification training. Leighton has presented computer security, cybersecurity, and forensics classes and seminars all across the United States and Europe. He has over 40 years of experience in computer security, cybersecurity, software development, and communications equipment operations and maintenance. His primary focus areas include computer security, information operations, assurance, software system development, lifecycle focused on modeling and simulations, of systems, systems engineering, integration activities, database administrations, processes, and data modeling. Obviously a lot of stuff. Today, Leighton is heavily involved in the CMMC program and actively involved in the CMMC training and education component. He is joining us from Minnesota. Leighton, thanks for coming on the show. Happy to be here, Jim. We appreciate you coming on and talking to us about the educational opportunities related to the CMC, CM, CMMC program. I'm sure the audience is uh, going to find this information very valuable and very useful. I thought maybe what we could do, Leighton, is uh, to start off having you talk a little bit about your background uh, in the CMMC training space, just to give people kind of a, a perspective on, on, on where you come from. Okay. About two and a half years ago, I joined the original CMMC accreditation bodies training and uh, working group um, before the, anything got set up and among multiple people we put together the basic training criteria for CMMC professionals that were going to be put out into the field to do all the effort to support DOD in their CMMC endeavors. Understood. You know, 
maybe what we could also do too is, is provide a little bit of context of, you know, for the audience, a quick kind of overview of the purpose of the CMMC program. Could you spend a few minutes maybe just providing that kind of 30 second elevator speech for our audience? Sure. Um, back in 2015 through 2017, DOD did evaluations around their uh, cybersecurity supply chain. And they saw that there was, of course, a dramatic increase and um, failure of various parts of the entire supply chain in managing the sensitive but unclassified information around the supply chain. And so they developed a program based upon NIST standards for managing this type of specialized unclassified information called controlled unclassified information or CUI. And then they put together a process using model uh, inputs from several different educational institutions, Johns Hopkins, Carnegie Mellon, those types of organizations, and uh, developed their viewpoint around how this could be transmitted and therefore adhered to by the over 300,000 contractors to support DOD on a yearly basis. And I know that CMMC has gone through an update recently. There's like a version mm -hmm. 2.0. Can you maybe bring us up to speed on what, what that means for, for the program and ultimately for those 300,000 contracting companies, maybe just from a big picture um, perspective? Sure, I'll be happy to. Uh, when NASA was introduced, it was introduced as a result of a program review that DOD conducted when the new administration took over in, in 2021. And it basically moved control of the cybersecurity program out of the acquisition division and put it under the direct supervision of the DOD CIO's office and the DOD CISO. Um, as part of those processes. It reduced the extent to which contractors had to adhere, but it solidified what the basic principles were for cybersecurity for all defense contractors. And it made it very clear that DOD wanted to continue and felt that there was this strong need to handle DOD information in a more secure manner than it had been transpiring in the past. And so how long would you say or indicate that the program has been around for that? I know you talked about 2015, but the program as we think about it today, is it mm -hmm. two years old? Is it three years old? What would you put it at in terms of uh, you know, its, its, its current kind of operating space? Well, it's current operating space. It's been in place since June 2020, when they really kicked everything off with the CMMC accreditation board getting incorporated about four or five months before that, they're about at the beginning of 2020. Um, they've had to, of course, go through federal rulemaking in order to make it stand up for contractual obligations for DOD contractors. They did their first version of that rulemaking in 2020. Uh, it rolled out in 2021, but then got put on hold because of the program review. They are going through their second version of the rulemaking right now, and we are literally anticipating those rules to get filed within the next 30 to 60 days. They're about, um, and then there will be a 60 day period uh, for comment on that. And then they will, they're anticipating it to kick in somewhere around late May, early June this year, uh, this next year in 2023. And then there'll be the burn-in period that everybody has to go through to get CMMC certified as an organization. So Leighton, that segues into my next question. You talked about organizations getting certified. Let's talk about CMMC certifications. So okay. what types of certifications for individuals are available within the CMC program? Is it only for organizations or are there personal certifications for people as well too? There's two types. The organization itself um, gets a certification from the 
uh, body that's going to be overseeing their process that goes through the criteria for CMMC within the organization. Uh, they get a certification that is good for three years to bid on contracts for DOD from that point forward. Now, individually, there are three certifications that individuals obtain. First is one known as a CCP, or Certified CMMC Professional. They will be basically providing the general guidance for organizations, as well as when they're not providing guidance to an organization, they will be assisting uh, the certification bodies, the organizations that get that certification activity for assessing other organizations. They will be uh, assisting in those assessments. The second certification is called the CCA, which is a certified CMMC assessor, which is the actual assessors for doing evaluations of defense contractors. The third is a CCI, which stands for certified CMMC instructor, and that's people who train the other two certifications. Understood. Can you speak to a little bit about the requirements for obtaining those certifications? For example, are there training classes that they have to pursue? Is there an exam they have to take? Is there an assessment? What does that look like in terms of earning the actual credential itself? Okay, well, starting with the basic one, CCP, that requires that a person obtain um, approval after they get their background looked into as to what they've done in the past, what types of areas, and then they apply to become a CCP. In order to actually obtain the CCP certification, they have to take a training course from a cybersecurity um, accreditation body approved training provider, of which there are 50 right now, and once they complete that course, they then are allowed to take the CCP examination. Once they successfully pass that examination and meet the DOD suitability requirements, they receive a CCP certification. Then the CCAs, on top of that, they get a second course. They have to be a CCP first in order to apply to become an assessor. Once they do that process, then they take a second course from one of those licensed training providers, LTPs as they're called, and they then take an examination there. They have an additional requirement that they will have to participate in three assessments upon achieving success with the exam in order to being overlooked by an already accredited CCA and being overseen by that. And once they complete those three assessments successfully, they themselves will become a CCA. The third CCI is that you have to have both the first two, the CCP and a CCA. Then you can apply to become a certified CMMC instructor on top of that, which is a another training effort, plus another examination, plus a training delivery review. So what's the uh, status of the exams? Have they all been released? I, I read somewhere they were going through beta, I believe it was. Has that been finalized uh, yet? That's correct. The CCP for, is the first one to set the foundation for the whole framework. And the beta tests for CCP are already accomplished. Um, there have been some of us who've already completed that exam and been certified. Um, they're starting to show up on the CMMC marketplace uh, for people who have completed those from the beta test. The actual exam is starting up um, and literally any day and, and those processes. The CCA exam uh, just went through its beta test in the last 30 days, and they expect the official exam 
to be coming out within the next oh, 30 days or so, sometime in December is what they said. Um, and then the rest of the program will roll out over the next few months. Understood. So let's talk a little bit about training. You, you brought up the fact that there were 50 authorized providers at this point. Can you spend mm -hmm. a little bit more time talking about that ecosystem specifically? Um, what does it take to become an accredited organization or accredited uh, training entity for CMMC? Is there anything in particular they have to meet or do? Uh, besides, obviously, certified training bodies already existing, number one. Number two, they have to have a history of providing both managerial and technical training in their past. Number three, of course, they got to pay a fee to the accreditation board to be licensed in order to do that. They go through a review uh, with the board and then the board uh, activity certifies the organizations as licensed training providers. There's one other uh, activity that goes along with that, and that's a licensed partner publishers that provide the actual training materials. That's a separate certification done by separate parties. Um, not every licensed training provider is creating their own training material. And so the licensed publishing partners are the ones who create the training material, and that's the only allowed training material to be used by the licensed training providers. They call it uh, CATM, uh, CMMC accredited training material. Um, and everybody who teaches has to use accredited material. They can't go out and create their own or using their own interpretations. They manage that very closely to make sure that there's always a standard that everybody gets trained to. Can you um, go out and buy the courseware yourself and self-study, or is it kind of like a closed ecosystem where you have to go through authorized, approved um, mechanisms in order to, to, to pursue right certification? Now, right now, it's only through authorized providers that can go through these efforts and you get the materials via the licensed training provider. You can't go out and buy it independently. I mean, the CMMC model is freely available anyway already. And so that's on the DLD CIO's public website. And so that part's available. Um, it's based on NIST Special Publication 871 and how to assess is based upon NIST Special Publication 871A, both of which are also publicly available. That's out there. What the assessors are going to be looking for, how they're going to do that, is put in public documents that are available on the DOD CIO's website. So those things are all already out there for public consumption and review and understanding as it is. The training material, however, at this particular point is only being provided through the licensed training partners as a whole program works to its uh, viewpoint. Um, training typically for a CCP class is one week, five days. Uh, training for a CCA is three days. Uh, training for an instructor is two days. Um, so there's a, for someone to go through the whole program, they get 10 days of training and three courses, three different exams as part of those efforts, all directed through the accreditation bodies, um, licensing partner activity, which is recently become a wholly owned subsidiary of the accreditation body known as the Cybersecurity Assessor an instructor certification organization, and they're the ones running the training program. Understood. I wanted to ask you about accreditation. Do you know if mm -hmm. the accreditation body is looking at getting their processes and practices accredited through anybody else like ANAB or any other organizations or using mm -hmm. any particular ISO standards? Are you familiar with any of, 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 of those kind of efforts underway? Yes. Um, the cyber 
uh, accreditation body is um, actively working towards obtaining an ISO 17011 certification as that effort. Each accrediting party organization, the the CMMC uh, third party assessing organizations is going to have to obtain an ISO 17020 certification as an inspection body. And then everybody who obtains the CCP, uh, CCA, CCI is going to be following the ISO 17024 for professional personal certifications as well. Understood. All right, so we're short on time, Leighton. I wanted to ask you one fa final question. How can viewers of the show learn more about the CMMC and training options for obtaining some of these CMMC certifications? Well, they can go to two websites. They can go to the dodcio.mil site right on the top bar. I just looked a little while ago. Is a drop-down menu for CMMC and all of the DOD standards and activities and uh, information is at that location. Uh, the other one is the accrediting body itself. They recently changed their name. It used to be known as the CMMC accrediting body. It's now called the Cyber Accrediting Body. It's at cyberab.org. And they have all the guidance out there on what to follow, how to qualify, all those types of things available on their site. Great. Well, hey, uh, Leighton, I want to thank you for coming in and sharing all this good information with our audience. Uh, that's going to do it for us for today. Um, we want to, again, thank uh, our guest, Mr. Leighton Johnson, uh, for coming in and talking to us about how education can prepare one for the CMMC program. Uh, we hope you, as a viewer out there, found today's information interesting, that you learned something new about cybersecurity. If you'd like to learn more about cybersecurity today and track upcoming episodes, please check out our show's website at www.cybersecuritytoday.org. You can also reach out to us with any questions or comments at our email, which is contact us at cybersecuritytoday.org. Hey, thanks a lot for joining us today. We look forward to seeing you at our next broadcast. Have a great day, guys. Thank you.